and welcome back to the bench. It's been a little while, but we are back to have a look at the Geek Vape L200 Classic. So I just want to give a little bit of history on the different models here for what I'm looking for and um, what we're going to be checking out. Basically, I've got the original Legend mod, Aegis Legend, that got really popular. Um, that guy was the kind of one of the first heavy duty mods, water resistant, dust resistant, drop resistant, all that sort of stuff. And in that respect, it did actually perform pretty well. It was a, it was a pretty solid mod. Um, it had a metal inner, so the whole core of the mod was metal. I think a die cast sink or something like that. Um, the outside was rubberized. The ceiling was quite heavy duty, so they actually put liquid sealant around the plates that go in from the top and the side um, to really seal it up and, and stop water getting in there. And apart from a few little quality control issues, it, it was a pretty good mod. So moving on from there, we had the next generation, which was the L200, the S100, and the M100. And they were a completely different design. So the, the inner of the mod was plastic. So it was all built off a plastic inner. Still rubberized on the outside, but um, just the, the whole construction was different, basically. The 510 was definitely weaker on the next generation, on the newer generation. Um, and I've had a lot of comments on the videos for those models about this plate pulling out. And it's because it's screwed into plastic on that generation. And if you had a drop, and kind of just as I thought on the videos, if you had a drop on them, it would pull those screws out of the plastic and then the plate would come off and then the 510 would come loose. So as far as the next generation living up to the original, no, it didn't. There's, there's no way to sugarcoat it. It was a lot worse in, in many different ways. And basically the reasons why you'd buy the Aegis Legend Tough Mod um, pretty much went out the window. So Geek Vape really did not do a good job with that. So what we're going to do is take it apart. Of course, that's why we're here and see if they've gone with the design from the, the second generation or well, they've kind of gone back to more the um the original legend i hope they've gone back to the original legend because it was just a just a better mod you know it sucks buying a tough mod and then you know just through normal use the top plate breaks out and the 510 stuffed and then it not waterproof and it's stuffed because yeah you've just used it in the way it's basically intended to be used which is not cool so yeah let's get it apart and I forgot to mention that this guy is a dual 21700 instead of the 18650. So it is a chunky unit. It's just a just a handful of mod and heavy. And, you know, if you threw this at someone, you're going to do them some serious damage, man. <laughs> and the color. Yeah, it looked better on the pictures. It looked better in the pictures. That's all I can say in person. Oh, I mean, I kind of choose a goofy color because I'm not actually intending to use this. I really just bought it to take it apart, so I didn't really care about the color. That's why I kind of went for the, the most out there color, but damn. I mean, it's more so this pasty orange, then it looked like super, super red on the website, and oh, not really. And this shiny red, mm, don't know. So we're just going to go ahead and remove all the screws we can see. We're going to take off this trim piece, even though I don't think I need to, but I'm going to take out all the screws, the ones on the top, and we'll just see where we get from there. These are T5, by the way, T5 screws. I do notice I've got the same lock switch that the L200 had, and the other one, I think, L, oh, sorry, the S100, I think, had it as well. And if I'm right, then that will just pop out. Actually, no. Ooh, it's, oh, it's tighter. So on the other video, can't remember which one, one of them, one of the second generation mods, you could just get a fingernail under that and just pop that straight out. It was just so weak. Um, that retention for the, for the um the lock switch was just terrible, but um that's stronger. Yep, definitely stronger. Okay, so that's good. And now actually, this top screw was super loose, and this bottom screw is super tight. So like when you hear it crack as it undoes, that was that one. This one was just finger tight basically. So that top plate comes off, which is just a cover piece. It is sort of different to the the second generation, where it's not one big silicon gasket piece that comes off in one go. Just notice that, like, I've only used this a couple of times, and I don't remember a tank a tank leaking, but um, there really like heaps of liquid under there. I guess there's well, there's no seals between the top plate and the 510 or that under plate, so. Yeah, there's been liquid sitting there, but geez, I, I, I must have used it like twice, if that. Mm. 
So we seem to have five screws on this inner plate, which are Phillips head, which as usual, they, they seem to use torques on the outside. Then anything underneath, they'll go back to Phillips. So a small Phillips head or silver Phillips head screws and a black one at the back. So let's get them out and see. Or oh, I can probably take the trim off now. Even though, yeah, I may not need to. Oh, look, there we go. It's um actual metal. It's back to metal body. Okay, so cast zinc looks like. Metal body, not plastic. Cool. All right, so we, we they might have sort of returned to the um the original Legend style, which would be good because, like, we, we want it durable. But this top plate is looking more it's looking like a mix it's looking like a bit of both generations anyway we'll keep going get the, i better get the batteries out before i you know take this thing completely apart the phillips that fits these inner screws here is marked in my kit as an s2 plus 1.5 whatever the hell that is i'm used to looking at um the you know number two number one double zero or zero double zero triple zero i think it's probably closer to a triple zero i would say Okay, so this inner plate retention, the screws here. It's good that there's five screws now. Much better. And they're really long screws. Look at them. So yeah, nice long Phillips head screws. And presumably they're going to be going into the alloy. So it's looking like it should be a lot better, which is encouraging so far. Ah, all right. No sealant. So that plate just comes straight out. All right, so there is a silicon gasket on this piece that fits down into the mod. Oh, it's weird. It's sort of a hybrid plastic inner, which is fine because, like, you've got, you know, wiring and, and contacts and batteries and stuff. So it's kind of nicer if they are enclosed in plastic, but then you want the outside to be metal, really, for the shock resistance. So maybe they've done sort of best of both worlds here, apart from the fact that this ceiling, it's not bad. It's not, eh. It's just like a double double lip kind of seal that fits down into the plastic inner. So I mean, we really just, we want to protect the electronics. We don't care too much about the outside, I suppose. But um, it's funny that there's a gap here between the metal and the plastic, which isn't sealed. So if liquid... You know, say you dunk your mod or you've got a really leaky tank and it goes through this gap. Like it had already gone through the gap in the 510 on mine and I'd literally only use it like once or twice. It would eventually go into this gap here and sit inside the mod even though it's not going into the electronics. So that's a little bit weird. But, I mean, okay. It means that the inside of the mod is sealed. And we'll just pop up this 510 assembly, which is looks like it's just kind of... Yeah, it's just kind of sitting there, the outer. There's the inner, the 510. Which, again, this needs to be sealed as well. And we've got a single... Very small little single O-ring stopping liquid going down through the 510. Little spring there if you're spring-loaded 510. So that whole assembly actually... Pushes in and out for the different size tanks you're using, what different depth uh, positive pin on the atomizer you're using. I mean, it's it's fairly clean and it's fairly well organized. So what do we got this wire floating around for? Why is he there? So obviously we've got a solder joint here for the 510 positive. The 510 negative is this white guy. And then we've got battery negative. So, yep, there are the series connections there for the cells. So that's main negative to the board, main positive. They're silicon jacketed wires, but they're pretty skinny. I'd say probably a little bit skinnier than than normal, but as long as the runs aren't too long, then you don't get too much voltage drop because it's a product of how thick the wire is and how long the wire is for how much resistance you're going to get and how much voltage drop you're going to get. So probably I'd say that, that this system is actually a little bit better than the original Legend. The original Legend had a whole assembly attached to the top plate that was just a lot of stuff going on. It had multiple layers of plastic and screws holding everything, sandwiching everything together. And it was under spring tension. You could see like the plastic flexing, different pieces actually starting to kind of come apart. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that assembly or how they did that. So I think this is actually neater. It doesn't look like there's any sort of shorting risk for the positive because we're all plastic inside here. So that's good. 
um, catastrophic if the main positive ever touches ground for any reason on these cells. So that's obviously got to be avoided. But no, we're looking we're looking pretty good there. Nice and neat, nice and simple. Hopefully short runs. All right, let's see if we can get this board out. Now, just like the other mods, they've got these two little hidden screws, and they look like T4. Actually, they look a little bit smaller. Yep, T4. Now, I have seen a few people complaining about battery door issues. So, yeah, I guess that could be a wearing thing where the, maybe the little tag starts to wear and it doesn't hold in properly. When you slide the release back, it's pulling that little metal tag back. And that guy sits in a little slot in the zinc. Now, zinc casting, zinc alloy is not the strongest. So, yeah, that could definitely wear out. And then if, if it wears the edge off, off that slot, then... Yeah, I could definitely see that little tag there, you know, coming out. Probably a good thing to do with these guys is push the door in nice and firm with the release pulled back. Push in nice and firm and then push it in. Don't try to force the door back in without pulling that back. Okay, adhesive schmoo stuff holding the screen down, which is normal, and that's all fine. And if you're careful normally, even if it looks a little ugly... Normally, you can just stick that back down and it will hold okay. Okay, so we haven't found any screws under here, but we have found membranes here for the switches. So that obviously allows you to be able to press through to the switches on the board underneath because the board's all in the sealed section and we're on the outside here. And um, that's pretty good. So they'll they'll go and mold that rubbery, silicony stuff, membrane stuff. Um, as part of this front plate, you're relying on that door to seal into the USB-C socket to stop liquid getting down into the board because that's obviously mounted right onto the board. The board's, you know, literally right there. If you get a waterproof, waterproof, it's not waterproof. They're water resistant. So nothing, basically nothing's waterproof at all, ever. <laughs> Got a water resistant mod. Don't go dunking it in liquids just for the sake of it. Just like as a party trick, hey, look, I can stick my mod in a glass of beer and it's, I mean, it's a waste of beer anyway. Why would you do that? Don't do that just to show that it's waterproof or a glass of water or whatever. Um, just because there's so many little areas where liquid can get through, even though they rate it to an IP67 or whatever it is, 68. Um, don't do it just for the fun of it. It's like if you get caught in the rain or you get pushed into a pool or something unexpectedly and... Your friends are being dicks, obviously, and um, and and the mod goes in with you. You know, dry it off as soon as you can, blow out all the water if you can, and uh, and you should be all right in those cases. But don't go doing it just for the fun of it, because something will get in somewhere eventually, and it'll stuff the mod. Just while I'm trying to figure out how in the hell this comes apart, just noticing that there's the balance wire for the cells, so that contacts onto the bottom plate, which is a series connection. And that's how the board can do balance charging and tell the individual cell levels. So that guy's quite important. If you ever have an issue where it's not reading the cells properly, like you know they're both charged, but it's reading one as like empty, one as full, just check to see that's not dirty for some reason on the end of that pin. It's gold coated, so it shouldn't get corroded, but you know, anything can happen. Just make sure corresponding area where it touches on the door is clean that way. Yep, in there somewhere. Make sure that's all clean. And just do that as a first port of call, because um, if it can't get a connection from that pin, the mod will just be like, don't know what's going on with the batteries. The levels are all weird. Now, that connection comes from, obviously in the case there, spring-loaded pin, which goes through a wire, a very skinny wire, all the way to the top. And then it loops around this top plate here, the section where the cell contacts are, then goes back to the board. So again, it's kind of a goofy setup. You'd think they could get that to the board a bit easier. The legend was like that, where they had the pin running, like this big long loop that went the whole kind of length of the mod, well, twice almost, because it went up from there, went up and around, and then all the way back down and ended up on the board somewhere down here. So it was kind of goofy that they couldn't find a better way to get that wire. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much because it's not carrying a whole lot of current, but it is directly connected to a cell, so you don't want this ever shorting out and and yeah if the wire does get in the wrong spot and get cut or shorted i mean that's going to stuff your mod so shorter the better basically um yeah just thought that was a little bit interesting that wire's running right through there and oh gee look at this okay we'll zoom in okay this is a little bit interesting 
just that when they've soldered this wire it's been a little bit too long and it's got a really tight bend on it like you can tell it's had a, a big bend when the it sort of flattens out at the bend so this adhesive grip part i guess is kind of pushing it like it's had a bit too much slack and then the grip part's gone over the top and squashed it over prefer not to see that just because the wires inside are very skinny and yeah if they break that's a very tight angle if they break your mod's not usable it'll just give you battery error um, so that might be something also worth looking at if you have a battery error and where where your mod can't see the different battery levels that'd be worth looking at just make sure they haven't stuffed that because you've got extra wire there so if you can solder you could always desolder it and just cut it to the to a better length so it's just straight into the pin and soldered on okay so you can get that lock switch out it's just a lot more firm for the retention we've got plastic tubes here hold on oh, might have to zoom out well oh, too far and there's plastic tubes lining the alloy there which is good because obviously insulation for the cells um, I don't like it that the cells can actually touch though so let's just put these cells in and confirm that that way oh no there's sort of a gap let's see it's pretty close well they kind of can touch actually <laughs> there's enough play in the sled so you never want never 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 want the two cell cans touching so one of these cell cans is tied to main negative and the other cell can is actually not at negative so when i say the cell can i mean the whole outside of the cell right, i've got it over here so this has got a clear wrap on it but um this whole outside yeah can of the cell is negative so it's one and the same with the negative contact now in a series i'll go to the other side So when you've got two cells in series, you've got essentially negative 3.7 volts, and that's directly contacting the can of the second cell, also at 3.7 volts relative to ground. And then at the top of this one, the top contact will be at the 7.4 volts in a series system. So that's at ground, that's at 3.7. So if you if this shorts to this, you'd have to have two damaged wraps, but that's not unheard of. Some people are terrible keeping the wraps in good condition. Check your wraps. Put new wraps on your cells. Don't use them until you have good wraps. It's absolutely vital. Like you have to do it. If those, if they touch in a series system, the, the positive contact of this cell shorting to its own case, which is like a dead, dead short. So it's actually, it's actually pretty hard to get these cells to go into runaway thermal runaway, like where they actually explode and you know catastrophic event. But having a dead short is the way you can do it. So I would much prefer to see these cells having no way to touch because they're going to be on a spring tension so they're going to naturally want to hold in their sort of neutral-ish position but you know bouncing around in your pocket in your car or wherever like why don't they make it just the tiniest bit wider well no they've got enough space there anyway they could make that metal all the way through or plastic or something i mean yeah you wouldn't want metal because that's even worse <laughs> um yeah, I guess I didn't want that tiniest little bit of extra thickness, but uh, it's much nicer to see them completely isolated. So say say you're stuffed up and, and your wraps are completely stuffed, they're all torn off the side. Or I've seen people take wraps off and just run cells with no wrap, which is just asking for a massive problem. Um, so you'd want to... If at all possible, you'd want to design a mod so the user can stuff up in the worst way possible and, and this can't happen. So I can push those cells together. And oh, zoom in. Zoom. I can push these cells far enough together where I, I would probably call that touching. Yeah, I mean, there's thickness of a wrap there. So it making it a little bit hard to tell if the metal cans can actually come in far enough, but it's... I mean, it's close enough to, to be an issue, I reckon. Oh, I found a hidden screw, you sneaky bastards. 
Okay, so that's going to help. Hidden screw at the back here in the case. It's not that hidden. It's right there. I don't know why I'm calling it hidden. So that'll make it a lot easier. And then, as I kind of thought... Yeah, here we go. Okay. Something was holding it. All right. So the whole assembly comes out now. Here we go. We, we were close to completely stuffing this mod, but we might have gotten away with it. And now I need to uh, desolder the balance wire. Because Big Clive would say, a one moment, please. <laughs> no, I can't do a Big Clive impression. One moment. One moment. One moment, please. One moment. One moment, please. <laughs> Am I getting close? Interestingly, just noticing they put a little bit of putty stuff, flexible silicon -y stuff here, where the balance wire goes through the metal case, and that would be another point of ingress, ingress actually as well, because if liquid did go through there, it would end up in the battery compartment and pretty much into the whole board area. Okay, now we should be able to slide this whole guy out. All right. I may not have completely stuffed it, so that's cool. Maybe I'll hold off on the Patreon. <laughs> well, it's it's never going to be sealed again. Um, all right, so similar... Yeah, this is interesting. This is It's all completely different. It's completely different to the original Legend and the, the next generation L200 and S100 and all those mod, mods. Completely different, pretty much. Well, it's sort of a hybrid... Sorry, not completely different, but it's kind of a hybrid between the two. It's not just a direct copy updated version of one or the other. It's it's really, yeah, it's a proper mix of both. So we've got two more screws down the bottom here, and then that would allow this whole section to come off. So what that I've gone and done is um, sealed the mod in its own little compartment instead of trying to keep the whole thing. Well, I suppose, okay, let me think about this for a second. Yeah, so it's an interesting it's an interesting setup here. They've gone and sealed the board in its own little compartment. So that would help. That would help as far as ingress goes, because like worst case scenario, if a uh, seal did fail, say on the battery door or in that little section where the balance wire comes in, and you get some liquid in here, it's still got a fair way to go to get into the board to actually stuff the mod. So it would have to come up through the battery contacts and then go through where the wires are. If the top section leaked there, no, you're buggered because it would just go straight down into the board. So, yeah, that wouldn't be good. This front plate seems to be pretty well sealed. It has got some kind of a liquid sealant. Like it's not just an O-ring around this front plate it's more like a liquid yeah i'm pretty sure they piped in some some liquid sealant and then then the front plate gets pressed into it so let's get this front plate off again it's smaller smaller t4 screws on this plate so yeah this mod's never gonna be insane again <laughs> i've given that a pretty hard time i think it'll be all right i'm not too fussed because i don't really use multi-cell mods anymore i'm just on the little mouth along guys that's because the juice consumption is so much lower in Australia, it's hard to get nicotine liquid, so I've got a, I've got a stash supply <laughs> in the freezer, um, which will last some years, but um, yeah, uh, I, I don't want to rip through it as fast as possible. So we'll just run along this front plate. And it like it, it, it's always hard to get off. It's the same as the other mods that had this. Sort of. It's got clips. But like they're not even doing that much just because the seal grabs on so hard. And yeah, I'm not sure if you could see that, that seal peeling away. Yep. Just right in there. So that's pretty good. The front plate, I couldn't complain about that really. So yeah, I, I, was, I think I was saying that I, I'm not sure how much these clips do. Because they're just little plastic clips. When really they're not holding on as nearly as hard as the sealant is. All right, so there's that front plate coming off, and yeah, a good amount of sealant. It's really hard to pull that front plate off. That is sealed hard in there. We will take this board out. So we've got four screws, looks like, holding it to the inner frame, and 
a non-coded board, which is probably like Department of Redundancy Department having a coded board inside a sealed section. But I mean, normal mods will coat their boards. It's nice to see a conformal coating to protect it, but they never do geek that on, on these mods for some reason. I guess they just think, well, it's, it's sealed anyway, so we've done our job. We don't need to seal the board. It's nice to see they've used the bigger switch for the fire button, which is just a heavier duty switch rather than these little hard plastic guys um these just seem to last longer and they're they're more resistant to getting stuff in them which again shouldn't be a problem because it's a sealed mod but um yeah i have seen a lot of mods will use these cheaper switches it seems to be either one or the other like it's going to be this tiny little switch or this bigger guy but they're the same models like across most brands almost all brands sort of variations even to a dna board is the same pretty much the same switch sx mini is different altogether SX Mini still uses pretty much the same switch. It's just got a little silicon cover on it. Um, yeah. But no, it's good to see they've used a bigger switch. The USB-C socket seems well attached to the board. We do have four physical points there that, that that's actually soldered for the board for strain relief. I think that should be quite reliable, that guy. Solder joints for the wires look pretty good. And yeah, they are pretty short runs. Oh, hang on. Where's that one go? Can't quite see the, the positive yet, but the... Do, do, do the negative no actually i can't see the battery wires yet but the five tens are right at the top here and there's a board away from the inner assembly and looks like a pretty normal i mean wasn't expecting anything different really pretty normal mod dual uh, you know dual cell mod board uh, rmy chip which i think is a company that geekfabe uses to actually manufacture their boards um, I'm sure they've used them before. Seems pretty normal. Got your standard big inductor on the back and some MOSFETs and capacitors there for the power section. And there's the connection for the balancing right down on the board there. So yeah, the balancing does, like you can see that small wire. So the in-between cell level and balancing wire does go all the way from the bottom of the mod, loops all the way around and back down to the plate. So that's that's actually how long or are off screen <laughs> that's how long the, that wire is which it's not carrying a heap of current it's carrying very little whatever the balancing current is you know it's only normally like maximum 100 milliamps milliamps or 200 something like that e, that could be better I, I'm, yeah i just feel like it, they could figure out a better way of doing that but anyway that's that's not the end of the world we'll pull that right out uh, look how long it is they have put a, a small foam sticker on there to try and keep it in place but that's a very long balance wire. I I don't know. I feel like you could have come up with something a bit more effective than that. Given the fact that down the bottom here is where the door is and where the connection actually needs to go to. It's right there. It's like literally right there. But then they've got to do a wire this long to get to it. It is really nice that actually the board is housed in its little container here. I, I really like that. That's nice. Just its own sealed little pod and this switch here for the lock is is magnetic so you've got a you'll have a sensor yep little hall effect sensor there that picks up a tiny little magnet that would be in this guy yep so yeah you've got no connection no ingress path through that lock switch which is good it's a good way of doing it all right we could probably do a bit of a wrap up on this overall overall i'm pretty happy with it to be honest, um, I was worried it was just going to be a 21700 version of the L200, which wasn't good. I don't think, honestly. The ceiling wasn't good. Um, the, the drop resistance crap because they're breaking top plates out because they're screwed into plastic. So, yeah. Yeah, I was worried it was going to be a remake of one of those. And um, it's not. It is different. It's different. So we've got a, a metal case now instead of plastic, which is like the original Legend. Um, the ceiling overall, pretty good. Pretty good, I think. Um, yeah, they've gone and put the board in its own little separate section here. The front plate is well sealed on, which obviously is a point of ingress there if any liquid goes through the front of the mod. That way. Um, so that's good. Obviously, USB-C socket is always going to be an issue there where you've got to remember to plug that section in really well because it, obviously if that leaks it's straight shot into the board and you, you're stuffed so i mean that kind of is what it is as far as the top section yeah much better because the 
the top plate there that holds the 510 down is screwing into metal. So we've got four quite long screws that do screw down into the cast of zinc. And it's a much better attention. I don't think you'll see that breaking out. It is sort of a floating 510 there, but it's all it's all held down by that top plate. And yeah, as long as that doesn't go anywhere or crack through the plastic, I think you're going to be fine. And yeah, you know, at some point, if it's had enough drops, you can break anything, even though it says durable and tough mod and all that stuff. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think it's definitely better than the second generation, like the L200, M100, S100, all those were pretty similar for their design. Definitely better than that. So uh, overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Um, yeah, if you want a huge, chunky, heavy 21700 mod, I think it's all right. I probably wouldn't get the red because it's not really red. It's more like a pasty orange. Sort of everything's a bit mismatching with the colors. But anyway, we're not, not to worry about the appearance. More worried about the, the construction quality. And yeah, I can't see too much wrong with it, really. Uh, yeah, I think better. I think they've, they've probably copped some flack for the number of um, mods I've seen broken from the second generation and I think they've, they've made it better. I wouldn't be too hesitant to recommend this as a dual, big dual 21700 mod. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it should pretty well live up to its name or, or claims of, you know, being tough and relatively water resistant. Again, don't go dunking in water just for the sake of it. Just think of it as you've got some more protection in case something does happen while you're using it. I think that'll just about do it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Cheers. See ya.